I thank Chairman Grijalva and Ranking Member Bishop for allowing me to contribute to this important conversation about our nation's future. My message today is simple. The data and the science could not be more clear. It's time to act. There are many no regrets, win-win actions to reduce the growing costs of climate change. But we're going to have to come together to form new alliances in our home communities across our states, and yes, even in Washington. I know I speak for thousands of my colleagues when I say that scientists all over the country are willing and eager to assist policymakers in the design of data-driven defenses against both current and future climate change impacts. As a professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology for the last 15 years, my research uses samples collected from the remote Pacific to reconstruct past climate variations. Our records are consistent with countless other records indicating that the rate and magnitude of recent climate change dwarf natural climate variability over the last millennium. I love my work. But three years ago, I witnessed something that would change my life forever. In 2015, we received funding from the National Science Foundation for a series of field expeditions to document the evolution of a strong El Nino event projected that winter. I had waited 15 years for this scientific opportunity. However, little did I know that warming ocean temperatures, six degrees Fahrenheit warmer than average, would kill up to 90% of the coral at our study site. And I had a front row seat to that carnage. 2016 would go on to become the worst global scale coral bleaching and mortality event on record and the warmest year on our planet since records began. Personally, 2016 was my wake up call. Unfortunately, the last years brought a number of devastating wake-up calls much closer to home. Hurricanes Harvey, Lane, and Florence decimated entire communities, uh, delivered record-breaking rainfall, while Hurricanes Maria, Michael, decimated entire communities with their force, including many in my home state of Georgia. The National Climate Assessment, released this last November by a consortium of 13 federal agencies, documents how climate change loads the dice in favor of extreme precipitation events and how warmer oceans fuel larger tropical storms. On the other side of the country, record-breaking wildfires raged across California, linked to prolonged drought and warmer temperatures. The economic toll of these disasters can be measured in the hundreds of billions of dollars However, their real toll, the vast human suffering left in their wake, is immeasurable. And beyond these deadly extremes, a host of additional climate change impacts represent a growing threat to ecosystems and communities alike. Sea levels are rising with up to six feet of global sea level rise projected this century. Drought threatens water supplies across the western U.S. with no end in sight. The oceans are becoming more acidic as excess carbon dioxide reacts with seawater. And as of today, 2018 will officially take its place as the fourth warmest year on record behind 2016, 17, and 15. Climate change impacts are now detectable all across America, and they will get worse. That's the bad news. I'm sure you're ready for some good news, and there is plenty to go around. The good news is that science can help inform measures to help protect communities as well as our oceans, forests, parks, waterways, and wildlife from the most devastating impacts of climate change. Here, early action is essential to the success of these approaches, delivering vast returns on investment. Many jurisdictions, from the local to the federal, have developed a suite of climate adaptation measures informed by rigorous science, stakeholder engagement, and cost-benefit analysis, but we must accelerate these efforts. Towards that end, the National Climate Assessment provides an actionable blueprint for such adaptive measures, including an in-depth assessment of climate impacts on ecosystem structure, function, and services. The other good news is that it's not too late to avoid the most damaging impacts of future climate change. We have the tools, all we need, to, we have the tools to, we need to dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And in doing so, we will enjoy cleaner water, cleaner air, and healthier communities. The rapid expansion of renewable energy across the nation demonstrates a strong appetite for carbon-free clean power. Even so, U.S. greenhouse gas emissions were up 3% last year. The bottom line is that we are running out of time. Comprehensive federal policies are needed to speed the transition to low-carbon energy sources. Top on the list must be a price on carbon to reflect the true cost of continued fossil fuel emissions and to incentivize consumers, companies, and the market to find the cheapest, most effective means of reducing emissions. With or without a price on carbon, increased energy efficiency is a win-win strategy that can deliver energy cost savings while reducing harmful air pollution. Lastly, there is a strong case we made that we can deploy our vast forests, grasslands, and coastal marshes in service to natural carbon sequestration. 
At its most basic level, this means designing strategies to safeguard these environments with their rich carbon reserves in the face of continued climate change. As a climate scientist, I have to wonder, how bad will it have to get for us to recognize that climate change represents a clear and present threat and to act decisively to protect ourselves? I am heartened by recent polls showing that nearly three in four Americans are concerned about global warming and support a range of policy options to address it. As a mother to four young children, I'm inspired by the sea of young people demanding that we not squander their chances for climate stability. I urge this committee to capitalize on the vast trove of climate science findings by one, protecting our natural resources and the communities that depend on them from known climate change impacts, and two, using federal lands to advance climate solutions rather than expanding the scope of the climate change problem. Thank you.